Hi guys and welcome back to the AHF. In this article we're going to be looking at the dagger versus the buckler as offhand weapons. You'll see them coming up in our videos all the time in a range of combinations using different swords, often the same swords we're using with the dagger with the buckler, a whole range of different weapons from rapiers to side swords, basket hilts, that kind of thing. And we're going to look at the differences in the two, um, how I find them in the fight, uh, the sort of history that goes with them, and what I'd recommend. Now, um, they're obviously used for largely the same purpose, is they're carried as a secondary offhand weapon. They're um, usually used with some kind of sword, um, ranging from, again, side swords, basket hilts, sabres, rapiers, all that kind of thing. And <clears throat> which one would I say is best suited to which kind of sword? Well, I think to largely understand the relationship between the buckler and dagger, you have to look at the time period where the popularity of one went out and the other really came in. If you look to the um, sort of, uh, if you like, the medieval period, which is obviously rather large, but um, the buckler was far, far more popular um, throughout the medieval sort of period than the dagger was when used as an offhand or companion weapon with a sword. As opposed to when you get well into the Renaissance, the dagger really starts to take over. And that really happens in the 16th century, is that going into the 16th century, the buckler is really, really still a very, very common offhand weapon, as it was through the medieval period. Um, and as you get towards the sort of end of the 16th century, maybe even the middle, but certainly by the end, the dagger is really taken over as the, the principal weapon. And that, I think that tells us a lot about the relationship between the two. Of course, you have to consider is um, fashion is... Did fashion have a major effect of one over the other? Because of course fashion will affect what, pe what weapons people are carrying. Uh, there will be all kinds of sort of reasons of context as to why these things change. But I think the biggest thing to consider is the use of swords um, in civilian life and how that sword type was, or typology was changing in that period. You go into the Renaissance and swords became really, really common for daily wear of men of most classes. So. You're talking about a time period where people are carrying weapons for self-defense. And what happened throughout the 16th century uh, with one-handed swords for civilian use is they tended to get longer and they tended to get more point-focused. So if you go to, say, um, the early 16th century, looking at Morozzo kind of stuff, you're looking at a lot of um, cut work still. It's still a lot of point work, but a lot of cut work. And then if you go further through into the 16th century, and finally, finally getting to the early 17th and things like, things like Fabri and Capoferro, which is 1606 and 1610, you've gone completely off the spectrum. There's no buckler reel left anymore. Whereas, say, Giganti, there's a small mention of buckler at the end of the 16th century. So you can see throughout the 16th century, buckler declined massively so, but, uh, and the dagger became really incredibly popular. Why did that happen? Well, I think fashion will have played a part. Uh, a dagger inevitably fits much better with the Renaissance fashion than a buckler does. Uh, it fits much, much better with weapons like rapiers. You can make them as nice companion sets. But I think there's a lot more to it than that. I don't think it's just fashion. When we've been sparring, I use the buckler and the dagger often as a lot of our members do. And what I've found is that the dagger is far, far better suited to uh, point-based fights. When I say point, I mean thrust-based fights. So when you're using a rapier, depending on who you're fighting, of course, but a rapier you would expect to be used around about a 70% sort of thrust work to a 30% cut work. That's not sort of set in stone, it depends who you're fighting, but you would expect rapier combat to be a little bit more point focused than it is um, cut, possibly even up to being completely thrust based. There were rapiers that didn't have any cutting edges at all, even though they were in the minority. Most rapier texts do show a lot of cut work. But as a secondary technique, and with not the power you've got of previous sort of generations of swords, like side swords and things like Morozzo. And then you look to um, those eras when they were using swords that had a lot more cut work and more cut in power. You see the buckler being really, really popular. And we found in our training that yes, when you are using a lot more cut work, the buckler is a lot, lot better. Now why is that? Well, first of all, most daggers that are used in the offhand don't have substantial hand protection. There are, of course, examples. You will see even sort of basket guards on daggers and really quite substantial pieces of protection, but that's not common. 
Most daggers have something like a, a ring, and this is a very large side ring, closed port side ring, that's unusually large. But that's the most you can expect on, on daggers as a general rule. Um, so this is rather quite substantial. The quillins, or quillins are um, wider than average as well, and the ring is wider than average. So it's overall quite substantial. But even this you see in the offhand, when you're trying to take cuts with it, there's an awful lot of risk to the hand and the forearm. And what you'll also find when you're using a dagger is it's quite easy to deceive a dagger with cut work and again strike onto these open target zones or even to the head. As well as the fact that it can be easier to drive through it. Bear in mind that when people were using uh, rapiers there were still plenty of other swords in use like back swords and side swords. So when you're having to deal with heavy or repetitive cutting actions we have found that the dagger is not as well suited to it. It can be deceived a little bit easier uh, it's not quite as good against strong, powerful cuts, and it exposes the hand more than you would necessarily like. As opposed to the buckler, which tend to be rather robust at taking those kind of cuts against um, really any sort of the era, they will take a full power blow. They are most of them are really quite tough. So, much more robust, much better suited to taking the cuts. Whereas the dagger, Notice the size of the buckler, even 12 inch buckler, uh, most of the sort of guards of bucklers are sort of held out in front of you. It does obscure a bit of vision, and when you're then talking about uh, a sort of rapier fights that's very, very thrust based, it can be deceived by the point just on the basis that you're lacking that bit of visibility. Um, now, the other thing to bear in mind I said before about bucklers, this is a smooth buckler. It's a common type, certainly. But there were other examples with hooks and spikes and raised rims that could catch blades. So there would be bucklers that would quite possibly be better suited to thrust work than a simple one like this. But it's a little bit hard for us to use in training because they will trap blades, encourage them to break and, uh, and of course all kinds of expensive and dangerous scenarios. So that's the only thing to consider there is that this doesn't represent every kind of buckler but was a common type. So there are some bucklers that will be better suited to it. But yes, when you're dealing with a lot of cutting actions, this is a much safer and more secure way to fight. And when you're dealing with a lot more thrust scenarios, this is much, much easier. And if you ever try this, try using uh, buckler um, and, um, and dagger separately in rapier fights, you will likely find that engaging um, uh, your opponent's thrust is really, really quick with a dagger. Daggers are commonly held with a thumb on the flat here, and you get this kind of windscreen wiper action. And if you look at the simple arc of coverage, you're talking, it can cover a huge amount of area on your actual parries very, very quickly, as opposed to the buckler where you've got a little bit of um, a, a sort of a, a obscured vision and it just can't move in the rotational, uh, to get the rotational speed to cover the thrust work as quickly. So that's what we found, is that the buckler is far, far better suited to a lot of cutting actions and, and heavier sort of cutting um, swords. And the dagger is much better suited to fights that involve a lot of thrust work. The other consideration is this. The, ra the dagger, as an offhand weapon, became incredibly popular as rapiers got a lot longer. And of course, as swords get a lot longer, they can become a bit cumbersome um, when your opponent closes against you. Say you've got a 45 inch rapier and your parry misses or they displace it or something like that. Recovering can be a bit slower and they can get inside you. Like using a pole arm, is at shorter range you've got some real trouble when you're using such a long weapon. So again, what is better against close range uh, attacks? Uh, a buckler or a dagger? Of course you can strike with a buckler, with the rim, with the boss, whatever else. Realistically, you're gonna have to be looking at striking to the sort of hands and the head and things like that to do any substantial damage. Whereas the um, dagger can very, very effectively be used offensively at close range. So again, I think as the rapier blades uh, and other similar swords became so much longer, the dagger is just so much better at defensive actions at close range. So it has the advantage against point work. It has an advantage offensively when you're having to use such a long blade where your opponent can close against you and you're not easily able to use it to defend yourself because a long rapier can get bound up at close range really, really quickly as opposed to something like a basket hilt, which is going to have a much, much shorter blade and can use rotational sort of uh, cuts even at close range to hold your opponent at bay. So there you go, that's a sort of an overview of dagger versus buckler 
And as I said, you can see a massive decline throughout the 16th century in the use of the buckler, to the level that when you go into the 17th century, there is so little mention of it compared to what you saw before in actual treaties and in sort of coroner's reports and just daily usage. The buckler is just so, um, has declined to be in very much a sport um, very, very quickly by that point. And it did carry on in usage as a sport up until the early 19th century. Uh, but um, as a self-defense weapon, the dagger became immensely more useful. And you'll also see in our uh, drawing videos with the rapier that you can draw the dagger um, for defense by itself. Have it on your side, on your right side, and if you haven't got time to draw the rapier, you can draw straight with the dagger. Which isn't to say that a man carrying a sword and buckler couldn't be carrying a dagger as well, of course he could. So there you go, there's our overall sort of opinion of dagger versus buckler. I hope you enjoyed the video. Experiment yourself and give me your opinion. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already.